Hey guys, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. So, as we start this video, we're going to start off with a couple of clips. We're going to be finishing off the uh, rank 10 of the Master Hunter quest by killing our friend Gordo here. Uh, he is the boar. He is located just below Thieves Landing. And to be honest, this quest is actually incredibly easy. The game will actually... Uh, warn you when you're in the vicinity of one of these animals as well but you know a quick google search will uh, pretty much bring up where they're going to be so next one is Lobo Lobo is the wolf and uh, I was expecting like a little bit of trouble with this guy he comes launching himself straight at us but uh, the auto shotgun kind of you know shreds him pretty uh pretty thoroughly to be honest with you like he didn't have a chance in hell <laughs> it's kind of crazy uh i'm actually surprised at this quest i did think that the uh legendary animals were probably going to be harder and tougher to take out but they're really not you know the hardest challenge was taking the animals out with a knife um, but this one, yeah, it kind of feels like they just phoned it in. And finally, just up with all the bears north of tall trees, we've got to deal with Brumas, who is the legendary bear, who for a brief second, I was going to say shadow of a second then, but for a brief second, I thought he was going to, like, tear us to pieces. But luckily, we managed to, uh, you know, give him five shotgun shells to the face and yeah that's that so we got the legend of the west outfit for that now unfortunately at this part of the game we cannot change outfits for story reasons but that was that anyway here we have a, the stranger mission Hello there. Nice. called california Name's Sam. Sam Odessa. Anyway, that's the name they gave my grandpappy when he came across New York City. Good to meet you, Sam Odessa. I'm John Marston. You long way from home? Where you come from? Yeah, well, it would be if I had a home to come from. Been out here for several weeks or several generations, I guess. Would have made better time, but my horse came up lame a ways back. Trying to get to California. See the ocean. I hear it's wet. From the Black Sea to the Pacific in three generations. I'm gonna make something of myself there. I'm gonna find something. Here they got a fine line of earthquakes out there. Maybe you can find one of them. <laughs> Listen, Gap Tooth ain't so friendly to strangers. I suggest you head back to Benedict Point. Before you run afoul one of these gangs that runs out of here. Well, thank you very much for the kind advice, Mr. Marston. I appreciate it. Now go get me on a coach. So, what an interesting character. A man named Sam. Out lost in the woods. Not in the woods, in the desert. Um, yeah. I do like this quest. It goes places. So after a few more weeks, you actually have to wait an Sam. entire game week. We can find him again. Still out here? How's it going? Hey, hey, uh, Mr. Mr. Mansion, isn't it? Yeah. How you doing? Mansion. <laughs> I kind of like that. You all right out here? Well, yeah. You ain't too much closer to California. Yeah, I, I found it. the coach wasn't so much to my liking. It was, it was a little bit slow, a little bit predictable, and a touch mundane. But the, but these these cacti are, are are quite palatable. I hope they are. Hey, listen, you need to find yourself a horse if you're gonna head west. From yeah, here. Um, a horse is is a, is a very noble creature. Do you, you ever hear the the tale of the uh, the horse who could who you know could do sums better than any school child? <laughs> I think I missed that one. See if I could just if I could have a trusty steed like that who could take me to the to the shining uh, sea. Oh, Sam, listen. California's in the west. Just follow the setting sun. 
It ain't that complicated. All right? Well, you take care of yourself. I think our friend might be uh, catching a little bit too much of the sun. So these two clips were taken over the course of two weeks of in-game time. And uh, this is kind of a pain of a quest because you have to do one part of the quest and then you have to go and sleep uh, about 30 odd times <laughs> uh, repeatedly saving the game. So California. Sam seems to be lost in the desert. Yeah, he's he's certainly going around in circles several times over. Unfortunately, I'm starting to wonder if our friend Sam is ever going to find what he's looking for. Anyway, on week number three, we find him again. Sam, we meet again. How you doing out here? Why the shout? Why the dancing? Why the laughter? I hope I, I die laughing, I do. Keep this up and you just might. My, my, my grandfather was, was a wise man who came from the east. He, he, he followed, a, followed a star and I, that's still me. I'm still following, still dreaming, still free. <laughs> you, can't, you can't cage us. We are above. We, we, we are above and, and, and we're free. Sam, you really need to come into town with me. You're not doing so well, Alan. No, no, no. See, I was careless, sir. I, I understand that now, but I, I, I will. I will find me my paradise. I will head west. I will. Come on, Sam. You probably just need a drink. You, you stay whoa, away whoa. from me. You whoa. stay away. I will find me my California. I, I, I will. Well, <sighs> he's certainly going to find some kind of paradise. However, I have a feeling for him it's going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. So, you ran into Sam again up north. Sun sickness has claimed his sanity for certain. Yeah, he pulled a gun. So, we have to go save it another 30 odd times. In fact, it's more than 30 times. No, it's 24 times. Yeah, to pass a whole week in this game. So we had to do that four times to complete that this quest. That's what, 96 times <laughs> we've had to go back and save it. Yeah, this took a little while, but uh, unfortunately here, we come to the conclusion of poor old Sam Odessa, the man looking for California. A buzzard stripping the meat from his bones has his... Uh, very bones bleach in the sun. Still, I think the writing was on the wall for dear old Sam. We're going to take out this uh, buzzard, or this vulture, I guess, chewing on his, on his face just because. Still, might as well not waste this opportunity. Let's go examine his body, shall we? It looks like he's been dead a while. Probably pretty soon after we left him, originally. So he's probably been rotting here in the sun for close to a week. And nobody thought to check his pockets. He's on a pretty well-traveled road, to be honest. But wait, there's something more. A letter was in his pocket. Deliver Sam's letter to Armadillo. And he had $21 on him. Which I guess is better off in our pocket than his. So interestingly, we can actually read his letter. Not a day goes by when I don't think about you. And our beautiful baby boy. It's now many weeks since we parted. Precisely how long, I don't know. Time. Once so predictable and relatable has slipped away from me. I know how callous my abrupt departure in the dead of night must appear. Uh, and I, for that, am truly sorry. But I hope you will find it in your heart to one day forgive me. For it was not a choice to leave, but rather an obligation. My grandfather came to me, uh, came to this country with a dream. A dream that was passed down to me. 
that is in my blood, in my very soul. I always believed it was my duty to realize that dream, to complete a journey that started in Odessa by the Black Sea three generations ago. But I have lost sight of what it is, if I ever knew at all. I am headed west towards the ocean, but I'm not sure why anymore. Day after day, the sun beats down on me in this godforsaken desert, relentless and mocking. Every step I take forwards, I seem to get further away. I thought this was my destiny, and perhaps it is. Maybe we are condemned to walk in circles, chasing the skyline. Maybe it's all a lie. Oh, this is a terrible land of broken promises. I had everything, and I gave it up in the pursuit of nothing. I fear I have made a terrible mistake, but there is no way back now. Forever yours. So that's a rather unfortunate tale of our friend Sam. I suppose, to his darling wife, I suppose the right thing to do would be to make sure his letter finally reaches his wife. So at least, as upsetting as it may be, she can get a bit of closure. Rather unfortunate bit of business, you see. But at least we got $21 out of it, I suppose. Yeah, this is one of the longest winded quests, I think, just because how much time there is waiting around. I notice there's nobody here. But it does look like good old Sam put a stamp on that letter. And there we have it. Anyway, let's get back to the ranch, shall we? Now, I've been thinking about doing, uh, or should I say, getting all of the outfits. But, I don't know. I'm not going to say we're not going to get them, but I'm not going to say we will either. Uh, it's, I have tried some of the mini games off camera, and I'm going to be honest, like, the mini games in this game are just shit. Um, they're not fun. I spent about an hour trying to complete the horseshoe, I think it was. Uh, it is here somewhere. I think it was the, for the Bollard Twins outfit. You had to actually win a game of Horseshoe at uh, Abigail's Farm. And yeah, that was, that was a thing. But we actually managed to do it after a while. I found out, I found so many tips and tricks for it. Um, you know, like the less money you wager, the easier it is. Uh, how to center and actually aim at the peg properly. Uh, yeah, but even then it was, it kind of felt like, you know, luck. <laughs> whether you would actually uh, win or not. So that's that. I mean, a lot of these outfits, I don't think they really do much, to be honest. Make a profit playing blackjack at, oh God, blackjack. Ooh, uh, search Sidewinder Gulch. Yeah, we're going to have to travel all the way over to Mexico and do this. I mean, and Dito outfit. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm not going to say no, but I kind of don't really care that much about that stuff. We are going to get all the stranger quests and uh, we are going to complete the main missions. Right. Also, we need to find every single location on the map. And, yeah, I don't think you guys want to see me, like, running around on horseback, going to every single location. So, we, we won't be doing that either. Right, between 5 a.m. and 6 p.m. Well, that's okay. We can actually get into bed, have a rest with our wife. Whilst we open the container and get some money. Excellent. Oh, well, we're not actually going to get money, are we? I like the way she's just, like sleeping on this massive bed. This bed is freaking ridiculous and I want it. Although uh, <laughs> Abigail is kind of you know, taken up next to no other bed. It, Jesus, that is massive. And of course, I mean McFarlane Ranch. That's where we had to win the game of Horseshoe. Okay. So, let's go see if we can do some quests now, shall we? Abigail was preparing breakfast or dinner or 
Well, let's hope she can actually cook this time. There's Uncle. Uncle is a waste of space. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Same thing I've been cooking the past 15 years with the hope of poisoning you. Ooh. Ain't working so well. <laughs> Not yet. To be honest, though, tastes bad enough to kill a man. Ooh. <laughs> I never was much of a cook, but I did try to be a good wife. And you have been. <laughs> Given what we was and what we came from, I think we've gone and done okay. I look at Jack. I look at him and I think we've been blessed. Maybe he can be something more. He's a good kid. He can be whatever he wants to be. He ain't gonna be no frontier gunslinger killing and running those gang, though. <laughs> that way's over. Railroads and government and motor cars and everything gone and done away with all that. And he ain't gonna marry no orphaned working girl running with a bunch of hucksters, neither. If he meets one like you, I hope he'll marry him. <laughs> Stop. For an illiterate gunslinger, you sure know how to make a girl blush. <laughs> God damn, Crows! John! You have got to go deal with them? They've broken into the silo again and are eating all the corn out from it. Of course, my angel. Wait, get out of there! All right, all right. Go on! Scat! Shh. Yeah, okay, so it looks like we've got to deal with some crows. Corn remaining. Oh, that's not good. Well, we use the shotgun. Hopefully we'll get a few of them. In oh. Oh. <laughs> you destroyed your corn? How did we manage that? Alright. Yeah, I do like these little moments with John and his uh, wife. It is nice. See you at the end of the game. Right, scare the crows. There we go. I mean... That is just murder. Protect your corn from the crows. We're trying. We're trying. Doesn't seem to be working too well. Oh god, they are literally destroying the corn. Um, there has to be a better way, I reckon. Maybe we just need to kill X amount of crows. That might be the rub. Of course, all of these guys are having their fill. Oh, yeah. I reckon we'd be better off using dead eye and a handgun. Mies thinks. Let's start off with that. A few more of them gone. Alright, let's try that again. There's no way we have to kill all these, surely. There isn't enough time in the day. Alright, well, we can't get the rest. But what we can do... Is... Yeah, that's not... <laughs> Without Deadeye, it's just not happening at all. Right, um... Munch down some snake oil. Now, unfortunately, we're limited with how far we can actually look up. Which is not great. But, you know, we'll take these things as they come. Right, let's get rid of those... There we go. Just had to kill X amount, I guess. They don't want none of this. Alright, keep the wife happy. Hopefully we'll get a little sun sign later for that. Oh, there's a dolt of an idiot standing there. Oh, Abigail wants us to do something else. Well, we shall oblige. Old friends, new problems. John. Got a telegram from some lady friend of yours, a Bonnie something or other. Something you ain't telling me? Bonnie McFarland. She's a friend. Mm. Saved my life when I went after Bill and nearly got myself killed again. Oh, now you two's in the habit of sending each other letters. How very nice. You weren't nothing like that. What's it say? I don't know. I can't. Well, you know I can't read. Give it here. You read that thing out loud. <laughs> I ain't hiding nothing. Dear Mr. Marston, stop. Need corn sacks, stop. Emergency, stop. Weevils and moths ate entire county supply, stop. 
Can you help? Not exactly the most romantic request now, is it? I guess not. And she saved your life, you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, then you're gonna have to help her and her family out. We've got a plentiful supply of corn sacks over near the silo. About the one thing Uncle didn't manage to have stolen while we was gone. <laughs> okay. Hurry back, John. And John, what's she like? Uh, you know, a little bit like you, I guess. She's a woman in a man's world. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, a little bit of jealousy. All right. Well, this is a, I guess, not the most exciting mission. I changed my mind. I'm coming with you. What are you waiting for? You better hurry. Of course she is. Okay, get to the general store before the time runs out. But why? <laughs> I don't think so, John Marston. You only just got home. That Jack has seen enough of me for a lifetime. Oop. So, is she married? This Bonnie McFarland. No. What does she look like? I don't know. Oh god, the jealousy is real. <laughs> what? Normal like me? No. Normal as in two eyes. Mouth, no, that kind of normal. Besides, ain't no woman as fine as you. A little flattery. Now we're finally getting somewhere. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. Another <laughs> pearl of wisdom from John Marston. I sure do miss those. I never took you for the jealous type, Abigail. I ain't jealous so much as curious. Uh huh. That's what they all say. She saved my life and she was decent enough to me, so I owe her this much at least. Yeah, that, as long as we actually get there in one piece. find a lot more out about that in the second game I ain't sure they kept their eyes covered there and back can't have been too far from here though they treat you right it ain't the first time I've had a gun to my head John you're forgetting your marriage proposal very fun no they learned pretty quick what would happen if they laid a finger on me it wasn't them or being there I didn't care about that I've been in far worse situations. It was the waiting. I didn't know if you was coming back. I don't think we have time to rest. Well, I was waiting for you to finish uh, your story. For a couple of days. We don't have time to stop, John. Yep, yeah, well. It took longer than I thought. Crack that whip, John. Or we'll never get there. The only thing Bill and Dutch was ever any good at was not getting caught. I started thinking you'd gone back to them. That life's over. I hope you're right. That's annoying. I was hoping we could Thank you so much. We lost the actually listen to the whole conversation. Miss McFarland, I'd like you to meet my wife, Abigail. Oh, ain't you quite the gentleman all of a sudden. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Marston. Likewise. Thank you for saving my husband's life and for teaching the miserable goat some manners, among other things. I didn't teach him anything. I know better than to try to change a man. You should meet my father. Oh, people can change, Miss McFarland. John and I have to believe that more than anybody. This is a decent first harvest for you, John. You should be proud. That's good land you got there. How are you feeling, Mrs. Marston? From what your husband told me, it must have been awful for you. I've been through worse. 
And I knew he'd be back before too long. He can't cook a meal to save his life. Abigail, in my darkest hours, when I was most homesick, just the thought of one of your rat meat stews kept me pushing <laughs> forward. Well, about as amusing as a weeping saddle sore, ain't he, Mr. Farland? If you're going to start yammering about women's work, John, I'd say you might be in the wrong company. I'd say so, too. I never felt so outnumbered. Well, I didn't realize we were growing corn, to be honest with you. Definitely a bit of jealousy there. Definitely. Well, I guess it's time to go home. Come on then, Abby. Let's go. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, hopefully that will keep her quiet. God, she is a Marty Moni bitch, isn't she? So, we've got a lot of dogs on our land. Or were they wolves? That's probably something that needs to be sorted. We did good today, John. I guess I better go fix us something to eat. Yeah. That sounds pretty good right about now. Maybe not rat stew, though. Just saying. All right. So we're actually living the farmer's life. It makes you feel pretty good when you think about it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to have to leave this one here. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, until next time.